Are you confused when it comes to pick the right case for your next PC build? Well, have no worries. In this video, I will show it to you 4 easy steps to make the right choice for your next build. Let's get started. Step number 1. Choose your components first. The case comes last. It's easy to look at the case as the thing that holds all the components together. So you probably think to yourself, oh, I should choose the case first, right? No, because choosing a case might look like something personal, it's easy to fall to a trap where your cooler, for example, doesn't fit the case, or your graphic card is way too long. So by choosing your components first, you gain two things by that. First of all, you get the performance you want, and number two, you make sure that the case fits those components. But wait, how do I choose my components right? Well, that's a great question, and make sure you're subscribed because in future videos we will talk about how to choose the right motherboard, how to choose the right CPU, graphic card, and much more. Before we continue to step number two, make sure to watch until the end, because on the last step I will show you exactly how to make sure that the components fit the case. But for now, let's go to step number two. Choose by the look. Everyone have different tastes when it comes to computers. Some of us like big towers, some of us like small towers, and some of us just don't have enough space under the desk, just like I do. There is no right or wrong here, and it's all based on your taste. And if you worry about performance, well, you shouldn't, because even the smallest PC today can pack a lot of performance inside. And even if you don't want the most RGB case ever, it's okay, we'll still appreciate you too. So after you chose your components first and made sure that the case looks good for you, let's talk about step number three, dimensions and positioning. When it comes to choosing a case, a big important step is to understand where we want to position our PC. Once you decided where you position your PC, you can start taking measurements and make sure that the case will fit in. The dimensions are always in the spec sheet. And if you have a hard time to understand what this means, here are some tips for you. The W stands for width, the H is height, and the L is length. Now, if you don't know what 426 millimeters means, we can easily convert that to our measurements using Google. Let's say we want to convert 426 millimeters to inches or to centimeters. The next thing to consider is the positioning of the I.O. and the front panel. In my case, for example, aha, you see what I did there? Never mind. For me, if the USB ports are on the top, it means that I can't reach them. Another thing to consider is cooling. The way that airflow works in a PC case is intake in the front and exhaust at the back or at the top. For me, I have very little space at the back. So I made sure to replace the stock pre-built fans that comes with my case with two big premium Noctua fans so I can make sure that I can get enough fresh air as much as possible. The other thing I did, I installed those fans at the top to help the fan at the back to take as much hot air as possible outside of the case. Before we get to our last and final step, make sure to smash the like button and punch it until it disappears to oblivion, so I can make more videos just like this one. Step number four, components compatibility. Now it's the time to validate that everything will go in as smoothly as possible. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the motherboard size. If you followed along with the guide and you chose your components first, you already know what is the size of your motherboard, and if not, go ahead and make sure if it's a normal ATX motherboard, MATX, which stands for Micro ATX, or even a Mini ITX, which are the smallest motherboards that you can get today. After that, we'll go to our case spec sheet and make sure that our size is mentioned in the motherboard compatibility section. If it's not, try to look for a similar motherboard in a different size since many manufacturers consider that and make the same model in at least two different sizes. The next thing is to make sure that the CPU cooler fits the case. If you chose to go with the big beefy cooler like the Noctua NHD15 for example, make sure to check the height of the cooler on Noctua's website and double check that in your case spec sheet if it fits. If you chose to use water cooling AIO, ensure that the case have the right radiator compatibility for your AIO cooler. Now a small tip here, if you go with a mid to small tower cases, make sure that the radiator of your AIO cooler is also not too thick, as it can also interfere with other parts in the system such as VRM heatsinks or RAM modules. After we did that, all it's left is to make sure our GPU will go in. These days, GPUs can be big and heavy. Choosing the right case for our GPU 
can be crucial. Crucial in a way that it might not fit your case. So double check on the manufacturer's website of your GPU that the length of the GPU is less than what is compatible with your case. And the reason why I say less than what it's compatible with, well, if it's the same, you'll have a hard time to install it, or it can even interfere if you choose, for example, to put your AIO cooler radiator in the front. If you followed all these steps, I believe choosing your next PC case now looks a lot easier, isn't it? Let me know in the comments below. If you need more help, I will try to reply to everyone, and I will see you in the next one.